It seems that 99% of the information on the internet regarding tight hip flexors involves just stretching them and different ways to stretch and elongate them. But why does that not work very well for many people and what could potentially be a better alternative? You see, hip flexors have been demonized as problematic muscles or muscles that contribute to things like low back pain, but the hip flexors aren't the issue. Hip flexors are just muscles and muscles respond to positions of joints. So they're just doing what they're capable of doing and what they're being told to do based off of what the joints around it allow it and tell it to do. If our position of our hips is one of hip flexion, or we have this forward pelvis right here and our hip flexors end up in this shortened position because that's what they do is hip flexion. It's frustrating to me when I see nothing but stretches for these muscles because there's a couple of other things that aren't being taken into consideration. It is important to consider muscles that are antagonists to the hip flexors, such as the glutes, but also the hamstrings. The upper hamstrings right here that attach on the back of the pelvis help rotate it posteriorly or back and that can help create some more hip extension potential for the hips so that way the joints have more variability the pelvis has more variability to move in and out of flexion and extension and it's not just stuck in this flexed state so getting hip extension back is a very important key and i do see some information with that and that's really helpful but here's the other thing that's not being taken into consideration and that is just because a muscle is short and tight does not mean it is strong so oftentimes the hip flexors are very neglected muscles that don't get trained very much in the gym and they end up being very chronically weak. Now I think we can all agree that initially it's important to help take some tone or stiffness or tightness out of the hip flexors initially and that means to me at least getting some hip extension back and also potentially improving the position of the rib cage too because if the pelvis is forward that means the rib cage is flared and that is going to hold us in a hip flex position. So we need to consider the position of how these ribs can influence the hips. So if these ribs can come down, then that means the hips can rotate underneath us. And almost no one talks about that relationship. I have more information on that in a video I'll link up above. So to set up, we need a box up against a wall or we need the end of a wall where there's some open space and we can keep this foot up against that wall. And also uh, this leg right here is flat on the floor. Now, uh, we just want a 90 degree bend at both the knee and the hip on this side right here. And the whole foot's gonna be flat on both sides. This is sort of in an A-frame position. And Trevor, what I want you to do is feel the inside edge of your foot on both sides. So that's going to entail feeling the inner heel and the ball of the big toe right here on both sides, but not rolling excessively inwards. He's keeping the whole foot flat, just focusing on that area. And then what I want you to do is pull down with this leg, but that's not actually going to drag his foot down. It's just the intention of sliding that heel down. And that's going to help get his hips slightly off the ground. He's also going to simultaneously push through this downside right here. This is more of a pull down. That's more of a push down through that inside edge. And that should raise his hips slightly off the ground. And he should maintain a little bit of that posterior pelvic tilt. He should feel a good bit of hamstring on this leg, some upper hamstring, potentially some lower glute on this leg right here. And he's going to exhale as he comes up and he's going to inhale as he comes down. Exhale as he comes up. Good, big open mouth side, getting all that air out. And then inhale as he comes down. We may cue you to hold that end range position depending on who you are and what your needs are. The most common mistake in this is that people are going to try and get their hips too high up in the air. Then they're just gonna arch their back. It's not gonna be too good. It's like you're a piece of Velcro being peeled off of the ground one strand at a time going that slow and that's going to help you maintain that optimal pelvic position that we're looking for there. The other thing is that people will push either too much through the downside leg or pull too much with this. It should be a 50-50 split. So make sure that you're not leaning towards one side or the other. From there, it's really important to strengthen muscles around this region, including the hip flexors themselves. Some of my favorite exercises for training full end range hip extension and the antagonists of the hip flexors are a cable single leg hip extension activity and also a glute ham raise hip extension activity off of one of those 45 degree hip extension machines, also known as a Roman chair. To set up for this, we want to be about a foot or two away from the cable machine itself. So that way we can hold on to the cable machine so that we're secure. 
And also, we want to make sure our pelvis is even with the ground, so it's not hiked up excessively on one side or the other. And also, if your pelvis was a bowl of water, we don't want it spilling too far out the front or the back. We want it to be nice and parallel with the floor. Now what we want to do is we want to shift our weight slightly over to the non-active side and then sweep our leg, keeping the leg pretty straight behind our body. But notice how there's about 10 degrees of the leg going out into abduction. Abduction is this right here. So around 10 to 20 degrees is gonna be that zone where we can get more hip extension. We don't wanna to be too far out, but just 10 to 20 degrees, depending on the individual is what we're gonna be looking for there. And also we're going to reach the end range hip extension, but the only way once we get past that to go further is to extend the low back. So only work within the limits of which you are capable. Once you feel like that back wants to extend, don't go back any further. Some people, they're gonna be able to go back pretty far. Others, not so much, but just work within the limits of what you have available to you. The most common mistake is that people will want to dump their trunk forward as that leg goes back, but then we're not actually getting in hip extension all the way. We're just going to be staying in the same plane the whole time. So keep your trunk pretty neutral, keep it pretty stable, and then just move through that hip. The other thing that we see is that people will have a tendency to, again, as we mentioned earlier, extend that low back and then we're not really getting glued as much as we are the low back erectors. The last thing that we see is people have a tendency to, as they get tired, hike up one side of the pelvis or the other leg, depending on their own individual compensations. Just make sure your hips are staying pretty square. Doing this will allow the hip flexors to move from a position of hip extension to hip flexion and back and forth again, instead of just being in this shortened position a lot. So doing this and following up some of the elongation work with exercises like what I'm about to show you can be a really helpful way to get long-term relief and have that relief stick. We need a cable machine with one of these ankle straps attached to the lowest most portion of our shin, top of the ankle. And we need something to hold on to for stability. That can be a bench set up like this. It could be anything that's nice and firm. You can hold on to a little bit. So we're just gonna push our ribs into a good position here. So we want to get a very slight amount of rib cage retraction here. This is gonna make sure this part of our spine is in a good position, which will allow our hips to be in a better position. So just a little bit of retraction without overly slouching as you do that. So keep the height in your skeleton. Now. Maintaining that, what we're gonna do is let that leg be pulled back by the cable. And then as we exhale, we're going to bring that knee up to our chest and the knee is going to slightly rotate out or abduct as we end in that full range of hip flexion we have available to us. So we're gonna be making sure that our pelvis is staying in a good position, so parallel with the floor and we're also making sure we're maintaining that upper back position as well, letting that leg get behind us into a little bit of extension. And we'll know that we're in our maximum end range here when, when we pull up and we feel like our hips are gonna dump underneath us right there. That would be a sign we went too far. So make sure you're only staying in the range you can get, raising that leg up. It's gonna go a little off to the side, but you're not gonna crunch under. The two most common mistakes first would be people are going to get tired and start to arch their back so they can get up. So make sure again, your pelvis is a bowl of water. It's nice and parallel with the floor. The other thing is that people won't abduct enough to get a full recruitment of the hip flexors. So they'll try to like push it inwards. And we wanna make sure that that knee is going straight up, straight up, straight up, and then slightly out at the end there, about probably 15-ish degrees. I'd recommend doing these exercises initially around three to four times a week for about three sets of 10 to 15 reps per set. If you can do that following up some of the exercises that I just showed you in that hip extension bridge, but also my other content, you're probably gonna see some really good things happen.